Welcome to the Real View Podcast, where Ohio realtors connect you to innovators and influencers, keeping you with the real view of real estate. Whether you're a broker, agent, first time home buyer, industry leader, or just happen to stumble upon our podcast today, you can expect to hear tips, tools, tricks, interesting information, and so much more from the experts in Ohio's real estate game. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Real View Podcast. I'm your host, Allison Wiley. Joining me for today's episode, geez, I'm already like, can't even get two minutes into this podcast and I'm already can't speak. I'm sorry about that, guys. Joining us for today's episode is Eleni Summershield. She is the COO of Wise Agent, which you are going to hear a little bit more what exactly Wise Agent is, but they are a partner and a member benefit to Ohio Realtors. So Eleni, welcome to the show. We're super excited to have you on today. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me, Allison. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, and she's going to talk to us about this world of contacts management, how realtors use it in this world of CRM. What does that look like and how best to utilize that in your day-to-day business? So before we get started in that, I have to ask our signature question that we ask all of the guests that we have on, which is, what is the best view that you've ever seen? Okay, so that is such a hard, I love that question because I think there's so much insight that you can get from somebody on this. And I love having insights on people and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But the best view I would have to say is on my, so I'm Greek, as you can tell from my first name, (laughs) not my last name. Um, And so I did spend a lot of my summers um, in Greece and my dad is, is from an island. And so going on the, being on the ferry boat, crossing over, um, going into my dad's island and uh-huh. just seeing, just seeing the whole, um, just town there. Uh, and my dad, you know, when we were younger, he would point out to this, you know, where the port was and he would say, oh, there's your grandfather. You know, there's Papu waiting for us and waving and we would wave. We wouldn't see anybody, but he always, every single time he did that. And it was just a a special and fond memory that I have of, of my dad and in Greece. And it was a beautiful view of just seeing the, the Aegean Sea all blue and sparkly and beautiful so oh grace has to be view. like isn't it one of the most beautiful like places in the world right there on that water it has to just be absolutely yeah. stunning <laughs> yes it is it's beautiful and i've been fortunate to travel europe and north america and i don't know if it's because i'm greek but <laughs> I'm, i might be a little biased but it is one of my favorite destinations oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah i've only seen beautiful. it in photos so i can only imagine um how, how beautiful it is in real life were you born over there I know you mentioned, you know, your your dad and everything. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm fr- first generation um, mm-hmm. here in this country. So my parents were immigrants. And so I do speak the language fluently mm-hmm. and um, can read and write and everything. And so, but yeah, that's um, that's my background. And so uh, my, my culture, the Greek culture is very much entwined in my life and, and in what I do for day to day. Yeah, which we're going to get into um, in a little bit, yeah. and, I, and I'm so excited to, to hear more about how a child of um, you know a Greek father uh, ended up here and doing what you're doing, so very excited to, to hear all about that. But we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the episode, but I want to get into the main show here and talk a little bit about, um, which I love the name of this episode and of this um, topic, finding, refining, and mining your context. I'm big on like yeah. rhyming, and when things sound you know so appealing, I love that. So tell us, you know, where do you start? We all know realtors work with tons of clients and keeping and maintaining those relationships are so important. And a big part of it is just managing your contacts and your list. Where do we get started? I know. Well, I mean, I'm glad that you mentioned the relationship part because that is the most important part of the CRM is contact relationship management that are in the middle there is for relationships. And with, you know, I read, I love Simon Sinek and I get his emails daily. And actually this morning I had his inspirational note and it said, strong relationships are built on trust and communication. But if there is no communication, there cannot be trust. Mm. And I just think that that's so powerful because 
as realtors, you're dealing with clients, you're meeting people and even potential clients on a day-to-day basis and maintaining that relationship, you have to communicate with them. So if you, you know, and there's a saying that I hear from a ton of realtors, like don't be that secret agent, right? So you Mm -hmm. have to get the word out. You have to be calling people, emailing people, texting people. There's so many methods of communication nowadays with text and videos and Facebook messenger and Snapchat and all that other stuff, right? There's a ton of ways to communicate with your clients. You have to be where they are Mm -hmm. and you have to know how to find them Mm -hmm. and how to put them in one central location. That will be your database, your CRM. So you can go through and sort them and organize them. In my opinion, there's nothing worse than having a database that's not segmented. It's really important to communicate the right message to the right people at the right time. Mm-hmm. And that's how that's how your business explodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I would love to hear more about this segmenting and how do you do that? Because it's like, yes, that makes so much sense. You know, is there a secret sauce or a secret what recipe or way to kind of segment segment that audience yeah. in the ways that you want it to be? Yeah. So one thing is, you know, the finding part. So you need to know where all of your contacts are located. Mm -hmm. Are they on a spreadsheet? Are they in some database that you don't ever log into ever? Um, You need to get them out from there. You need to put them in a place where you're going to be logging into. Are they on your phone? This is where a lot of people get tripped up because they're like, oh, all my contacts are on my phone. And it's like, okay, great. Where is your phone syncing? Mm -hmm. What what account? They're like, "I, I don't know what you mean. And it's like, okay, you have an Android or an iPhone, right? Those are the majority. And the, it, it does tilt a little bit more, skew more to iPhones and Android phones. But either way, iPhones inherently sync to iCloud. And that's what most people think. But that's the default setting. But you have, as the, as the owner of the phone, you have access to put your contacts wherever you want. So you could add them. You could have everyone going to your Yahoo account or heaven forbid your AOL account, right? (laughs) There's a throwback um, for you. (laughs) Right? And so you'd be surprised. And so if you have, and that's fine if you have them going there, that's that's totally fine, but you need to know that. So then you know when you're sending out, um, when you're looking for contacts, if you're looking to put them into a CRM, you need to know, well, where are they? Are they in my AOL? Are they in Yahoo? Are they in my iCloud? Are they in my Gmail account? Where in the world are they? So finding them would be the first thing. Mm -hmm. And you can do that really easily just going to your settings on either Android or iPhone. Um, The nice thing about Android is they do kind of force you to use um, your Google contacts. And a lot of people are Gmail users. So that's, that's kind of a nice setup there. On the iPhone side, it's still as simple. It just is, you just need to take the time. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, um, so once you get them in there, is uploading everything into one location. So figure out, do you want them in your Yahoo? Do you want them you know, in your Gmail? Most likely you want them in your Google account. So they're everywhere. A lot of Gmail or Google apps users, and I use those interchangeably, you know, like your Gmail. It doesn't have to be like, you know, eleni at gmail.com. It could be my Google Workspace account. And so once you get them all into one location, then you could start segmenting them. Mm -hmm. And that's the refining part. And that's where it's really important to do that because there's nothing worse than, let's say, Allison, I met you and I've known you for many, many years, right? And I know certain things about you. And, but I like to garden, right? I'm, I kind of, I don't, I'm not very good at it. I (laughs) enjoy the process of, of the end results, but I'm not very good at it. And I know that you never guarded, you've never done anything with gardening, and maybe you don't even like gardening. It would fall really flat if I sent you messages about gardening. Mm -hmm. You're like, why is she sending me this? (laughs) I have no interest in this, you know? If you're you're not interested in a topic and people keep sending you that information, it falls flat and it's just a waste of everyone's time. Mm -hmm. And then you're ruining that relationship because you're not, you're not showing that you've listened to what they are saying to you. You've not taken the little hints in their life that they've told you about and really honed in on that and segmented them into your database Mm -hmm. saying, okay, these are my gardeners. And Allison is not one of those people. So Allison is into, you know, writing and maybe she's into fashion or whatever it is. And so I'm going to send her articles about that as well as real estate related things 
I'm also going to know, you know, is she a first time home buyer? Is she, you know, moving up? Is she doing this? I'm going to find things out about you. And I have to put those, put all of those like-minded people or those people in those same groups and those same categories in one kind of umbrella or um, bucket of, of topics where I know I can send to them. And it is really important to get that right. And there's no way of doing that other than you yourself doing it by yourself, Mm -hmm. right? And that's where that relationship building piece comes in too, right? Like you have to spend the time getting to know your clients in order to to know about their lives, to know that they're interested in fashion versus gardening, you know, and and to learn that about them. So then that way, that's kind of how you continue along the relationship and how you kind of run your communication based off of that, right? Exactly. Because it can't always be, the conversation can't always be, hey, Allison, are you looking to buy or sell your home? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, that doesn't, it doesn't bode well for you. I mean, it just, there's, the, the relationship won't progress because that's the only thing I'm after. But if I'm really interested in you as a person, people will do business with you that like you, trust you and know, and know you. Mm -hmm. And so of course I have to give a little piece of myself and then, but I also have to ask and inquire about you. And then keep that in mind and, and go back and refer to it. Every time I have a conversation with somebody, I have my contact record up with their information. I always have a picture of them too on there. So if it is just a phone call, audio call, and I I can't see them, it's not a zoom or something. It's nice to be able to look at somebody's face Mm -hmm. when you're talking to them. It just makes the conversation go a lot smoother and feel more personable. Yeah. This episode of The Real View is brought to you by the Ohio Association of Community Colleges. Ohio's network of community colleges provides accessible training that accommodates the busy lifestyles of aspiring real estate professionals at half the price of a traditional university. With convenient locations in every part of the state, as well as online options, Ohio's community colleges are your smart choice for pre-licensing education. For more details or to start the journey to a real estate career, Visit the education page at ohiorealtors.org and then click on the pre-licensed course locations. Absolutely. And that's, you know, one of the reasons why we're we're recording this over Zoom and, you know, it would be easy to say, yeah, let's turn the cameras off or just, you know, call me and I'll just record our audio. But there is something so special about seeing that person's face and and being able to converse with them that way. It does make it feel more real and more like you have that person's full attention, you know, which is which is why I'm a big fan of, of videos. So do you have a way that you would recommend segmenting your contacts or is there a best practice that uh, you found success with for that? Yeah. So that's a great question. Absolutely. I think um, like what we talked about with the gardening and the fashion, whatever, segment your, your clients based on their interests. You know, that is something you can, you can have clients that are maybe new home buyers. Of course, you want to know where they are in that process. You know, did they, um, are they currently looking, you know, actively looking to buy or sell a property? Um, Absolutely have that kind of category for them, but then also having one where it's their interests are also involved in that. So then when you are looking at a property, let's say, and you know, maybe you just got a new listing and it has a beautiful big backyard and maybe the previous owners were gardeners. Now you can take and segment your audience and refine it down to maybe, maybe it's only five people or 10 people or less, but what a beautiful message to send out to those 10 people saying, I found this, I just listed this property. It has a beautiful garden that I know that you would love. And they get that message. You send them pictures and maybe, you know, maybe they don't all buy it, but you only need one person to buy that house, not 10. Mm-hmm. So, so it might resonate with one of those people saying, you know what, I would like a bigger garden or yeah, we are actually looking to expand because we are a growing family or whatever the case may be. And so it's really important to have it based on where they're at with their process of buying or selling, but also their interests and anything else that you can think of in that process, like where they, I love having, um, you know, a ranking system and saying, you know, these are my A clients that I am like truly friends with. And I could just give them a call at any time and say, hey, let's go grab a cup of coffee. And I know that they'll answer and join me, right? And then there's those B clients that are, you know, they're kind of like 
kind of part of my crowd, my, my inner, not really my inner circle, but they're part of like people that I would definitely invite to like a bigger function. If I had something like a client appreciation party for sure. And they refer me and whatnot. And then you've got your C, C clients that would be, I've worked with them once, but I really don't know them well. I need to build this relationship. And so finding them that way is also a nice way to be able to say, who do I not really have a great relationship with right now? And who do I need to call and reach out to and get to know better? So it's, it's not just about the transaction, but it is about the relationship. Yeah, absolutely. And so you have these different kind of segments and you know, you know, you can do it based off their interest, based off of their level of involvement and engagement with you. And then I think the other part of it too that it's 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 hard to kind of wrap your wrap your head around is how do you know how these people want to be communicated by. Because you could have one of your A clients that, you know, just want mm-hmm. emails, one that just wants text. Yeah. How do you figure that out and how do you manage that? Yeah. Well, that's a great question. So you can definitely, you know, if you're sending out emails, you should be looking at your email report and looking, are people opening up this email? And if they're not, then like ask yourself, why is it that the message didn't resonate with them? Or is it they never have opened up any of your emails? They might just not be email people. Yeah. Right. And and then try sending them a text message. Mm -hmm. And then do they reply 100% of the time via text? Then I would put method of contact text. And I would just make that, you know, like a point and just say, this is going to be another segment is how do I communicate with everybody? And then if it's Facebook Messenger, I mean, I know that's that's a big one. A lot of people reach out to me through Facebook Messenger. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that's, you know, easy for some people and they really like doing it that way. Just make sure that you are there wherever they are. Yep. Now, some of those other ones like Snapchat and whatever, I know, like I'm not a Snapchatter. My children are. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't really do that stuff. But if that's your world, then dive deep, like go in on, in on it and just, you know, Snapchat them while you're at listings and showings. And if that's what they love to, to hear from you, that's where they like to see you um, or TikTok or whatever it is, then be there. Yeah, the TikTok is the new one. I'm sure, you know, so many of our yeah. agents yeah. listening are like, yeah, I only communicate with my listeners, you know, through <laughs> through yeah. TikTok. Yeah, for sure. And it's just important, like you said, to keep that record and keep track of when you learn someone's communication style, make sure that you save that on record so then you know that, you know, moving forward. And that goes back to the building relationships and, and you know, learning your clients. So super important there. So tell us a little bit about when contact management goes wrong, because sometimes they can end up in five different spreadsheets, two different phones, my work phone, my personal phone, my Facebook. My yeah. <laughs> what yeah. do you do yeah. if these contacts are all over the place or if they have, you know, bad information that needs to be updated? If someone moves, someone gets a new phone. Um, tell us a little bit about how you how you kind of maybe clean up uh, if you have a really messy contact right. list. Yeah. So one thing I love is our find and find duplicates. So you should definitely have a way of being able to find your duplicates. And that's what we do at Wise Agent. You can find your duplicates. We also sync our contacts directly. We have a two-way sync to Google contacts, which Google does have a few more engineers than we do here at Wise Agent. Yeah. So they have a great- <laughs> They have a a great find and merge duplicate. So you could go in there and say, find and merge all my duplicates in here in in Google, and that will clean everything up. Making sure that when you're starting with the CRM is one of the things is, is making sure that you're starting off with a clean list of people, clean database, and then always taking time in. And I always tell people, do it monthly. I mean, yeah, it would be great to do it weekly. I just don't know anybody that has that time. Like I really don't know anybody to have that time. And even monthly can be a struggle, but take an hour out of your whole entire month, out of the 30 days in the month, take one hour and say, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to look for all my duplicates, or I'm going to look to see, you know what? I know I sold somebody so-and-so property five years ago, and I don't think I ever updated their their address book. There are great um, virtual assistants out there that you could have them access your database, your CRM, so they can handle some of those things for you as well. But maintaining that is something that you need to be doing consistently. So every time you you have a touch with somebody, every time there's a conversation, a text message, an email, that you pull that into your CRM so you can 
you can keep all of those records in there. And we have a great integration with all of the Google apps. So your Gmail, it doesn't matter if you're using the workspaces or just your regular Gmail account, you can have emails going directly into your um, Wise Agent account. So you can save those as part of your contact record and see the whole history. You could send text messages through there and communicate through everyone and receive communication back. And that's really important to have all of that in one place. Yeah. And there's a way too that you can actually build a workflow that will add new contacts because, you know, the, you have the managing part. And then that, like you said, well, that's why it's so important to spend an hour on it every week, spend an hour on it every month, because think about how many new people you're out and meeting and having and starting those relationships with that you want to make sure get added onto your communication. And there's kind of a way to do that, that those contacts will get added on with the correct information, right? There's kind of a a flow to make that happen. Right. Right. So anytime any internet um, leads that you get, if you're buying leads or having leads coming in, and it doesn't always have to be from like any of the portals. It could be contacts that you have or potential clients that you have from your website. So somebody could fills out their contact, your contact form on your website, you want those going into your CRM so you could automatically respond to them. Um, we also have a, a social media integration. So when the, when the potential client comes in, there is an automated opportunity for you to get the social media content from them right away. So you can just look up that contact. All you need is an email address and we'll scrape social media and find whatever data we can on them, including their picture, their title, their work history, their LinkedIn profile, their Pinterest profile, all of that information on them. So then you can really get a a really good understanding of who this person is that's reaching out to you. And then again, that helps with you being able to segment the audience Because if you're looking at their LinkedIn profile and it says, you know, that they just accepted a new position and they're moving from, you know, Chicago to Ohio, well, now you can say, oh, okay, well, that's why they're reaching out to me. They're relocating. And maybe I need to send them more information on particular neighborhoods. And then you see them on Facebook and they announced, you know, that they're having a new baby. And so now you can say, okay, well, put them in an area where there's really good schools and parks and whatnot. Now you can really... It, that can really help you segment your contacts so you could talk to them in the appropriate way. Yeah. And not only finding the right messaging and, and communications and interests for that client, but how often to actually communicate with them. I know that is so hard. And that's one, you know, as a communications person myself and in here at Ohio Realtors, how often should we be communicating with these these contacts? And is there kind of a segmentation that you can do not only within the messaging, but also within the frequency that um, our clients are hearing from us? Right. So I would say, I mean, it's so hard, right? Like <laughs> it is, it, it is hard because you, you don't want to, you don't want to send a message just saying like, hi, how are you? Yeah. And that's it, right. You, yeah. you want to send something that has value. You want to make sure that any message you're sending is going to have some value to it. What we have at Wise Agent is we do have drip campaigns that you could send out via email and you could, you know, I think we have those going out every seven days for you, but you can set it up and say, I want these the six touch email going out once a month. We write a monthly newsletter for you so you can send that out to your database. And that's something that's, again, it has, you know, a couple of articles, a recipe, it has a, a monthly inspirational quote in there. It's just about getting um, getting your name out there so they see your email, they see your name, your brand, but you always want to make sure that you're sending them something with value. Mm-hmm. That's really important. The frequency will depend on on what your capabilities are, like, you know, and what your your what you can do. If you could do once a week, I think that would be fantastic. I know agents and a lot of agents and there's a friend of mine in Chicago. That's where I'm originally from. He in Chicago has, you know, all these different parks in the city. And you, you know, he would send me out, even though I don't live there anymore. He still had me on his newsletter where every Friday it was like, what's happening around the city at this weekend? You know, I'm sure you know, here where I live in Arizona, it's the same case. There's things that are happening throughout, you know, the weekends. You can, you can find information to send to them. You want to make sure that that's, you're targeting the right people and they're going to want to know that. 
Yeah, absolutely. No, it's super. As they say, content is king, right? It will always be king. It's always the most important thing that we can do to maintain that relationship. And you've kind of talked a little bit about Wise Agent and kind of what it is and some of the features of it. But I kind of want to hear more um, about that and about how you got started and in your role with within um, the company. And tell us a little bit more about this awesome uh, benefit to Ohio Realtors. Yeah. Yeah. So I have been with Wise Agent for 10, a little over 10 years now as a chief operating officer. And my role here is to do gosh, a lot of different things. Uh, my passion is technology and people. And so I love the relationship building part, but I also love the technology side of things. My background is in computer science. So I do know how to write and read code and all of that. So I really do love that part of it. And then we love our part- new partnership with Ohio Realtors. I think the benefit is is that you're getting you know, Ohio Realtors is is providing the whole entire association with the ability to get a CRM to help you really grow your business. And so, if you just go to um, if the the viewers out there, are, or the people that are listening, mm-hmm. I should start with that all over again. <laughs> Um, so for those that are listening, um, if they go to wiseagent.com slash OAR for Ohio Association Realtors, if you go to that site, you'll see, you'll get preferred pricing for Wise Agent, and you'll be able to have our onboarding um, specialist walk you through how to get all of your contacts into Wise Agent. So they're going to have a conversation with you. It's one-on-one, kind of like what we talked about here, like do you have sticky notes with people's names on it? Where do you have all of this? Do you have spreadsheets? Are they in your Google contacts? They'll help you get everything into Wise Agent. They'll help you get started. They'll get your email branding set up, which would be like your email signature. So you could start sending out emails right away and then walk you through the training process. So they'll have a conversation with you to see, do you need more contact management training or do you need more marketing training? And our marketing training is extensive. We have several different versions of the marketing training um, on all the different things that we offer. And so um, I think it's a really great benefit, um, especially with our 24-7 support. Yeah, no, that's because awesome. at any time of the day, um, day or night, when you're stuck on something and you're like, I need someone to help me through this, a wise agent is there for you. Yeah, that's great. And tell us a little bit about what is CRM? Like if, if we have a brand new agent listening, you know, tell us what is CRM and then why is it so critical for your business? And we kind of hit on a little bit of it, but I would love to kind of just hear you kind of reemphasize some of those points. Yeah. So CRM stands for Contact Relationship Management System. And what that means is basically you're taking your whole entire database, everyone that you know, and putting them into one place where you could market to them. You could, you know, have all of your transaction management also set in there and get your brand and your name out there. Keep all of your records in one location. So then you're really, it's the hub of your whole entire business and everything that you do revolves around your CRM. And then we do have over 150 integrated partners. And so everyone from Dub and BombBomb, which do video um, video e- um, emails and text messages to all the portals from Realtor.com and Zillow and some other technologies, really cool technologies for you to have additional, you know, things like the social media features, some that are absolutely free, like the social media integrations, and then some that are um a a paid integration, but they're all there to enhance your experience and really help you grow your business. So you are able to, you know, to serve your clients and your clients needs. Mm -hmm. And it almost just takes your business to the next level. You know, when you have, um, you know, a tool like this, that's handling all the day to day ins and outs stuff that can be automated and that should be automated. That just frees up your time so much to focus on other things, to focus on showings, to focus on marketing materials. When you know, you have that relationship side automated and taken care of it really, it really is a huge help in that day to day life of, of being a realtor. Oh, exactly. I mean, realtors do 250 million tasks at one time Mm -hmm. for, you know, tons of people all simultaneously. And then on top of that, you have to do all of your marketing as well, right? Because when you're listing your your property, you have to go through all of your, your, all the tasks that you have to do for that. But then you can't 
neglect or ignore the people that are the potential new clients that you're getting. Those need to be responded to and, and have some kind, you need to have some kind of system that will help you keep all of that organized so that you're not dropping the ball. And it'll help you remind you on what it is that you need to do and where you left off from the last conversation, which is really important. So important, because I don't know how anyone can keep it straight in their head when you're dealing with as many contacts as realtors deal with on a day-to-day basis. There's no way, you know, you kind of almost need something, need a paper trail at least. I know I do. I It would get so yeah. lost in my jumbled mess of a brain. So yeah. absolutely. Uh, any last um, words of advice or important tools or tricks that you want to share with our realtors before we wrap it up here today? Yeah, I I was just going to say, you know, we do offer 24-7 support. And anytime any technology is offering 24-7 support, I always tell people, take advantage of it. It is there for your benefit. Um, They are there. Our support staff is there to help you, guide you. There's training and free support. So you don't have to pay. There's no additional fees for it. There's no setup fee. There's no training fee or whatever fee. It is um, It is absolutely free. You really should take advantage of it, especially just starting off, because what it will do is it will really help you stay organized. So then you don't have that jumbled mess of like duplicate data and um, contacts that are all over the place that really could could stumble you and, and really trip you up in the future. Yeah. And just, you know, really help those, it takes those relationships to the next level, you know, so you don't want to start slacking on it and then lose touch of of individuals who can be business for you in the future. So definitely important if you don't have um, your CRM system, so important to get that look into it. Wise Agents, a great option. Like we mentioned, they are a partner with Ohio Realtors. So they are vetted through us. Um, Great company. Check them out. um, If you are looking for that and just check out CRM in general, we know how important it is as we we've gone through in this episode. And we know how important it is to take care of and clean up and really streamline all those contacts because that is your business and your future. So and Eleni, thank you so much for joining me here today. It's been so wonderful having you on and thank you for all the work that you're doing for our realtor community. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I love serving the real estate community. It's one of my favorite industries out there. So thanks so much for having me. Yeah. And to all of our listeners, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to The Real View. That wraps up today's episode. You can keep up with the latest on the podcast at ohiorealtors.org slash The Real View and on Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Have questions, comments, or suggestions? We want to hear from you. Email us at podcast at ohiorealtors.org. We'll see you next time.